am the only unbought and unbossed politician. Why should I step back? This is Unbought Power Hour with Rasha Mubarak. Hey, Muhammad. Ahlan, hello. Isaac, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Alhamdulillah. It's been a minute. I know. It's been so busy. I know. Yaatik al afiyah. Allah yahmik. Shukran. Allah yahmik. Sorry, this lighting is a bit harsh. Okay. Okay. Is it like the sun's going down right now in Palestine? No, actually, it's still quite sunny, um, and it's windy, so this curtain keeps blowing up in my face. Nah. <laughs> Hi to everybody watching. Hello. Everybody's really excited. Um, Hamad, oh, just what a world, right? Like, we were, only a few months ago, we were having small clubhouse rooms and talking about your ideas of mass protest here in the States <laughs> on the Nekba. <laughs> And um, you are doing that with the Palestinian on the ground beyond that in a way that we could have never imagined. So just talk to us. How are you doing? First of all, I miss you. And I'm, you know, I'm so proud of you. And talk to us about what's going thank on. You. Thank you. Your- thank you so much. Oh, my God. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm good. I miss you as well. I do remember. I, I think the, the clubhouse rooms were quite big, actually. And yeah, I didn't think I didn't think I wanted to uh, I wanted to, you know, work with some folks on protests all over the world. And um, boom, they that came to life. <laughs> yeah. I, it was not I didn't think anybody expected it then. Yeah, no, but I think it was just, honestly, I remember your push and your determination and even here with the U.S. borders with local Palestine activist organization and even elected officials and like, you were just like ringing the alarm. And I, I feel like now Sheikh Jarrah is really has become something not just are people familiar with, but people are understanding what the Nakba is, what 73 years of Israeli occupation is, and your family's case that has been ongoing for quite some time. But talk to us about the case. Like, it's just interesting because it's like you have to go, like you say, to a, a racist system that already displaced the Palestinians to be making those kinds of decisions who are also settlers themselves, right? Yeah, absolutely. First, I was trying to say thank you, you know, and this has been like the fact that Ghira has become this household name is in fact due to the tireless work of many activists like yourself and advocacy workers all around the world in the States as well. And I'm really appreciative of it. Um, In terms of the case, you know, I I cannot... uh, Mm -hmm. It, it, it cannot be, you know, quantified uh, or nor do I have, you know, the desire to understand the legal nuances of the case because at the end of the day, we understand that this system, not only was it built on stolen Palestinian land, um, but it, it is willing to do anything, any kind of fabrication to displace you. It is willing to justify whatever. And oftentimes people will cite here and there one or two racist laws but people need to go beyond that and understand that the entire system is biased against Palestinians, to say the least. Um, In our case now, um, we are kind of being forced by the Israeli government, by the Israeli judicial system to reach a settlement with the Israeli settlers. Um, And we are just seeing what's happening. You know, the, the, the Supreme Court is refusing to make um, is refusing to make a ruling on this case, and so we're kind of being cornered to make our own um, to make our own ruling to kind of be responsible for our dispossession. Because if we do um, reach a deal, quote unquote, right, um, we're yeah. going to be responsible for our own dispossession. It's not going to be the Supreme Court's ruling. It's not going to be the settlers' ruling. It's not going to be anybody's push. Everybody's going to be satisfied, except the members of Sirzarah, who are going to be kind of blamed for this. Yeah, and I think that, Mohammed, um, um, people like you have um, 
it's been monumental because you've even the language that we use is important using forced expulsions versus evictions you just explained why that's important right first of all we like they're not supposed to be our, our landlords they are not our landlords this is our land um but also just how so much of the zionist movement has been co-opted by language has been co-opted by a trickling down into social justice spaces and i think something that you were able to do alongside um post george floyd is like just a few years ago people were scared to take a knee people were scared to write black lives matter or say black lives matter and people were you know were getting fired and and um for saying from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. But something that you've shown us and uh, is how to be unapologetic, how to be unbought, and um, just if you can just talk to like language, you can talk to just like what is it is that you do to ensure that you continue to like obviously not forfeit your values um, in your fight for justice and for the Palestinians and really people globally. Yeah, well, first of all, shout out on Bot. Um, second of all, you know, it's it's interesting. Um, the Zionist strategy has been uh, uh, a constant red herring, a constant distraction. You know, you cannot um, say a word, you cannot make a statement without being cornered, without being put on the defense, without having to explain yourself and justify yourself. And in my case, I refuse to do all of this. And I think there's a growing community of Palestinians who are refusing um, to do this. They're refusing to be put on the defense. They're refusing to make excuses. Obviously, um, this comes with a lot of backlash. This comes with a lot of bullying. It comes with a lot of intimidation. And people are worried about their livelihoods and they're worried about their socioeconomic status, their relationships, and so on and so forth. But we're also building a community of Palestinians who will have each other's backs, who will not let such things, such muzzling um, of mouths, such, you know, silencing of opinions be acceptable. I think that's that's the the tipping point here is this, like you said, we're un unapologetic and we're not trying to be respectable. We're not trying to appeal right. to a certain audience. And I think a lot of that, too, to your point, is that it, it does appeal to this two side narrative that is very dangerous and problematic and um, undermines the Palestinian um, freedom struggle. But Mohammed, like, you, you know, you are you are someone that we all love and adore. But like, we want to know, like, how do you Thank how do you, you take care of yourself in this time? How do you like? You know, I know like you're like, oh, you know, the the people in my mentions, like they just have me keep going. But like in reality, like, what are you doing? We want to make sure in your deed about like a had like and I know something that I love. But you remind me of like the like the old school Palestinian, like kind of like, oh, well, all the Palestinians go through this. Like that's something like we. we <laughs> so when we ask you how you're doing, you're like, I'm fine. I'm I'm the lucky one, you know, but, like, really. You know, what are you doing to take care of yourself? What, you know, like, like you said, everybody, especially living here on the ground, um, goes through this. I have the privilege of being away for some months of the year to study outside. But really, when you're back here and you're, you see everybody's different reality, be it inside the wall or um, you mm -hmm. hear from people inside the BC Gaza Strip or inside Jerusalem or inside... Um, land that was occupied in 48, like Haifa, everybody has a different reality, but everybody's going through it in a certain way. And that's, I think that's what makes me, um, you know, keep pushing. But also, I'm not going to lie, like, I complain more than anybody else I know. <laughs> I'm constantly complaining about this. And You're I'm venting about it constantly. So, yeah, complaining and advocating. <laughs> Um, You're so, so yeah, I think yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not an issue of like exceptionalism. It's not an issue of mm -hmm. um, working too hard or like being tireless. Yeah. It's just um, I recently realized that oh my god, I have a platform and I've been shoved into the, you know, into the spotlight, and I yeah. just choose what to say and what to not say online. So mm -hmm. you see maybe fifty percent of what I think and say, and the other fifty percent is me complaining and whining about how hard this is yeah yeah well i'm glad and you know that we're all like we're rooting for you and we're all like and and your your family and everybody <laughs>
how's your baba doing? Like, <laughs> we all are always like looking out for footage of him and his his wisdom. And, and he cracks us up a lot of times. And inshallah, he's doing well on your sister. Everybody's good. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, they're all they're all doing good. Yani, and my father sends his uh, his regards. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's really wonderful to think about Shukh in the sense of a tight knit community in the sense that there's like, you know, dozens of people like my father who go through their life um, despite all of this and remain resilient. And it's it's where we draw um, it's where we draw our strength from. And I think about this in the sense that this has been 49 years of going to courts every single month you go to court or you have a hearing or your neighbor has a hearing and you all do it as a community. And to realize that my father's generation, just mm -hmm. the older generation of Palestinians is exhausted by this, um, yeah. makes me work hard to end it and work with my peers to end it because I also do not want to be exhausted by it. I'm just... Um, you know, in my early 20s, and I'm already kind of sick of this. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you are very young, and um, you're doing the damn thing. I know that there's a, but how are you? a lot of young people that, um, you know, globally, but specifically here in the US, and you know me, I live here in this violent state of Florida, where we don't have real progressives, we have loud liberals that oftentimes exceptionalize Palestine. But what I've seen is, all of these young people, Muhammad, come out, right, with the Sheikh Jabbah and the forced expulsions in Jerusalem and Gaza, everything that happened in May. And, um, what, like, what do you tell young people that, you know, how not to get disenchanted and then, you know, we end up in opposition of uh, the right wing publication or even establishment. And many, many, many times here in the state of Florida, um, social justice orgs that like you think of as your co-strugglers historically, but have are not showing up for you and many times they're contributing to this kind of violence to the anti-Palestinian rhetoric. What do you tell young people and activists to uh, put Palestinian activists and our co-strugglers? Yeah, I mean, I think that's an excellent question. You know, um, I think what's been helpful for me, I every day, and not just me, like anybody who speaks up for Palestinian liberation, for decolonization, who is critical, um, who's unafraid to, to not just talk about human rights violations, but the illegitimacy of the regime we live under is going to receive a lot of surveillance and bullying and intimidation and a lot of counter work. Um, and I see it every day on my Twitter, on my Instagram, and I see the articles written and blah, blah, blah. But it's really, it's, it's really important to remind yourself um, that the tide is turning. I think that's what's, what matters. Yes, there are people who are grown men um, getting paid to write stupid articles <laughs> about us, but also there are hundreds of thousands of people who are taking to the right. street, and you do not see hundreds of thousands of people taking onto the streets um, to advocate for the other side. Um, so it's just really important to remind yourself. And I, I think um, something my grandmother has always believed is the cyc cyc cyclicality of history is that what comes around goes around and is, mm. is there's no empire on earth that has lasted forever and every empire should come crumbling. Every form of oppression will eventually come crumbling and this gives me hope. And at the end of the day, for us, for people like you and me, this is not really a choice. You know, you're immediately threatened. If you're not immediately threatened, then your family is threatened and your loved ones are threatened and your, your friends are threatened. So you have to say something, um, especially if you have some kind of uh, um, privilege or leverage or platform, I think. So yeah, I think I, when I was in the States, a lot of my friends or a lot of the young Palestinian Americans that I would meet sometimes would be hesitant or afraid rightfully because of the repercussions and the ramifications. So I think the the counter the counter argument should be that even if there is ramifications even if there's consequences there's going to be a body of palestinians and palestinian institutions or allies that will protect you and yeah. work to defend you absolutely but you never told me how you were <laughs> oh i'm good alhamdulillah i'm just like so i'm just really happy to see like you in good spirits and you know um honestly i, I am proud of our our Jalia, our diaspora, our movement, our co-strugglers, our young people, and I'm most certainly proud of you. It is, it's tiring and it's exhausting. And then like, when I go to bed, I'm like,
oh my god what is this life and then i see you and i'm like okay <laughs> like this is this is our reality and i and i think to when when people don't understand that aren't palestinian it's like we don't have a choice like you said we don't get to stop being palestinian nor nor would we want to stop being palestinian but it's it's not something that we can pause and and to that I, you know we're thinking about it. and i see i see you talk about all right y'all when's your next rally you're asking folks and then we have i see that you all have launched um make noise for jerusalem with the august actions and how do you know we continue to like keep those mo momentum and continue actions to you know yes um our demonstrations are um beyond powerful right like the masses of people but how do we get folks to really stay in action beyond the megaphone you know beyond the peace sign in the air like all of this is important right the electoral process holding our elected officials accountable we've been doing petition deliveries um vigils actions using your platform um so how do you how do you keep this momentum within right now i'm just thinking yesterday right when our signal chats for some of the palestine and i'm thinking hey y'all like and you know the reaction's a little bit lethargic i think not so much because people stop caring but um there's for some reason people run on urgency right so how do we keep that going of course yeah, I mean, of, of course i think uh, like you exactly what you said is that people run on urgency and there needs to be bombs um dropping or people actively crying in the street it seems that there has to be bombs dropping for people right. to care and go on and do something but i think it's about building a, a culture of accountability building a culture of sustaining this work sustaining this movement beyond just protesting beyond just um angry tweeting and i think the one major part of it is narrative shifting and i think that battle we are winning today we are we are successfully changing yeah. the mainstream narrative on palestine um i think and i'm very proud of this generation's hard work and i'm very proud of the many many people and movements this generation has built on um yeah. but another thing is that you have to remember that op oppression uh, i hate to say this word but oppression is you know is intersectional is like if it's not happening to palestinians it's happening to indigenous people especially in the states if it's not happening to indigenous people it's happening um to black people and it's really important to constantly um work against fascism against dehumanization against subjugation no matter of the vic regardless of who the victims are because eventually it's just math right. the less oppressive people there are in the world the less oppression there be and if indigenous people are more empowered in the united states it's more likely that palestinians are more are going to be more empowered in the united states uh, in 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 general i also think you know just to add something really uh, really fast is that we have to kind of build around this unapologetic um sentiment we have built in the past few months we have raised and when i say we i mean everybody who's participated in this movement in the past few months we have raised the ceiling tremendously and now is not the time to allow palestinian elites or institutions or people who are afraid to lower our ceiling we have justified our resistance we have justified our existence we have justified um our anger and we have justified it in a way that is unapologetic in a way that does not explain it away or does not um you know apologize for it so i think it's really important to stay there to be unabashed in your support for our liberation because people around the world are more likely to support you mm -hmm. if you are in a position of power Yeah. yeah. Also, and I read everybody's comments while I'm while I'm speaking. It's very distracting, but thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "How does he do this? This is so much. This is overwhelming." But you can. Well, I I guess I'm. It I. It's pleasantly surprising to see how much support there is, right? Versus sometimes the the Zionists um, tend to infiltrate so much of our as they're monitoring and all that. Um I know I know you have to go soon and I think um I what do you what do you have to say to specifically Floridians <laughs> that tend to um who are in leadership position who who do uh movement work who 
many times when they want to talk about Palestine, they'll bring up other issues like, oh, well, we've, you know, they lace it with combating anti-Semitism. Um, they lace it with uh, just the importance of combating um, hate on both sides. And I, and I just, I, I really wish I could just like have every Floridian that does this work, I guess globally really, but like, listen, listen to you and listen to the Palestinians and just like, what do you have to say to folks that continue to really try to undermine or who really understand, but continue to be on the wrong side of history and wrong side of justice? I mean, you know, let's take a specific case. Uh, just a few weeks ago, Ben and Jerry's decided to wow. stop operating <laughs> in the territories occupied in 1967. Which is just and scratching the surface, right? It's not yeah, yeah, it's literally just scratching the surface. And yet the response um, to this action has highlighted how important such action is. And I think Florida is doing the most trying to kind of vilify Ben and Jerry's and get them to reverse their, you know, decision. And, you know, like they do the red herrings and tell us to focus on other things. I think it's important to focus on other things in the state of Florida instead of lobbying so hard and working so hard for Israel, instead of um, dying on, on the hills for Israel. Let's fix homelessness in Florida. Mm -hmm. Let's let's um, fix all of the problems that are happening in Florida and, and give people better education and health care. Let's give people better access to resources, better access to services, instead of wasting our energy as policymakers, as politicians, um, working to vilify Palestinian people, working to um, actively subjugate Palestinian people. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, these people, for you and I, these people are not our audience. And if they're not working to subjugate us, they're going to be working to subjugating somebody else. And we, we don't need to change their minds. We don't need to be, um, you know, sympathetic towards them or have them be sympathetic towards us. We should just replace them. We should just overcome them. And we will. And I think I, I say this and it sounds like a big, like a big, loud um, slogan. But I do think the dam is cracking, if not already cracked. And Florida... Um, we'll catch on. <laughs> I like how you use the, the <laughs> damn old crack as we're like peninsula, you know, and we're climate change. And I think, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, absolutely. And I, and, you know, speaking of climate justice, I think, I, you know, encouraging folks to lean in that like all these issues, like you're saying, climate justice, indigenous fight, the black struggle are not only do we want to see the freedom for black and brown marginalized people, but it's heavily interconnected. Last question for you, Mohammed, I know you got to go, but like actions you recommend people to get involved in that you know of that are happening, whether it's here in the States or we're in Palestine or globally. Yeah, I mean, people in Florida and elsewhere in the States follow Russia and watch Unbought. It's a series. I'm, 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 I'm very happy. There's an Israeli flag. Yuck. I'm very happy to be in the in, in participating with you in this conversation, and I've watched many, many other, many, many other inspiring conversations on Unbought. So I really appreciate you even inviting me on here, and I appreciate sharing time with you. I think. We need to continue protesting in every way we can, be it on social media or in the streets or in the ears of our representatives and policymakers. And we need to be thinking, all of us together, about different ways to organize locally. If you are in the States, it's really important to think about organizing locally within your own city um, to help the Palestinian people and any other subjugated people. And in conclusion, I just want to say thank you again to Rasha Anjad. I really appreciate you having me and I wish I had more time, but we'll definitely do this again. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Mohammed. I love you. Inshallah, next year on our birthday, May 15th, it will be the, we don't, we're not commemorating another Nakba and we'll be singing happy birthday in Palestine. <laughs> Inshallah. In <the> end, <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Mohammed. I love you. Allah And you know where to find us. We're here. Thank you, thank you. Bye.